Surely you've heard the claims and the arguments and the counter arguments in the barrage of advertising on the issue of school vouchers. Tonight, Eyewitness News has the first of a series of reports we're calling the truth test. We'll examine claims made in advertising on political races and we'll do our best to give you the straight scoop. Richard Pyatt is here with an analysis of the war of words over vouchers. Rich? And Carol, we think the best way to tell you how to vote on any issue or candidate is to get informed and come to a conclusion yourself. Read a voter's guide, much like this one. But sometimes, even still, it's hard to do when you're bombarded with all those ads designed to change your mind, which means it's time for a truth test. Pro voucher ads say a yes vote for referendum one would be good for public schools, shrinking class sizes, allowing funding per pupil to go up. One illustration of how that would work is in this Oreo cookie ad. Now this student decides to take $3,000 in a voucher and go to a private school. The class size goes down and we can allocate the remaining money on the students who are still there. True. The question is, how much a difference would it make? State analysts estimate school districts would save between $2.4 million and $11.5 million in the first year. The overall public school budget is $3.5 billion, making that savings three-tenths of 1% at the most. The program includes a hold harmless clause, which allows schools to keep the difference between the cost of the voucher and the average funding per student. During that five-year trial period, the program is an experiment. Again, in this ad, Congressman Rob Bishop says that program would be good for public schools. Referendum 1 will allow us to increase funding for public schools. Technically true, but all funding increases are for the legislature to decide. And the ad leaves out the fact that the vouchers would be a net cost to the state, a new state program, in fact. Vouchers use money from the general fund budget not the education budget. Estimates are the net cost to the state would be five and a half million dollars in the first year. Those opposed to vouchers want to capture that money and apply it toward public education now, which is what Utahns for Public Schools mean when they have the 2006 Teacher of the Year saying this. Private school vouchers take resources away from public schools. In a financial sense, that's false, especially in the short run. Again, vouchers are paid for out of the general fund, not the portion dedicated for public schools. And the five and a half million dollars dedicated to vouchers, even if it were applied to the education budget, would amount to two-tenths of one percent of the overall budget. This is all a philosophical difference about how to spend your tax money. It's true, as with any new program, no one knows for sure how it would play out. In anti-voucher ads, these are cast as troubling questions. Setting few, if any, standards for private voucher schools, like no accreditation, no accountability for our tax dollars, and no requirement teachers have a credential. That's false. In fact, school accreditation, accountability, and teacher credentials are spelled out in both voucher bills. That includes requirements for annual student testing. What is true in the ads is that that testing isn't administered by the state. The tests are sent directly to parents and compared with nationwide results. The bill also addresses teacher and school standards. Those include college degrees or professional credentials for teachers, Schools must have more than 40 students and meet certain criteria. Anti-voucher foes don't think those standards are extensive or public enough. We consulted impartial analysts and this voter's guide for that information. The bottom line is, yes, Vouchers is a new program. There are unknowns. But there is fear of the unknown being used to persuade you right now in those ads. That doesn't diminish the genuine concern people really have for the public school system, which is all over the place. We'll have more truth tests through this election season and next year, too. Quite enlightening. Thank you, Richard Pyatt.